there was a there's a debate in Oklahoma. Uh, there there's a chance for a Democrat to win uh, the governorship mm. in Oklahoma. We mentioned this the other day. It's, I mean, it, it it's really sort of surprising. Which speaking of bad predictions, I believe uh, this Republican Kevin Stitt was on Dave Rubin's show um, uh, this summer. So if he loses, I'll be going back to that interview for uh, clips. And yeah. I mean, this is the state that has the nation's str uh, strictest abortion ban right now. So I I mean. Or at least one of them, and it was one of the first to to sign it. That's what uh, made a priority. So I'd imagine that this is going to be one of those test gr testing grounds for abortion activating certain kinds of voters. And it's kind of an interesting race because the Democratic opponent, Joy Hoffmeister, is a former Republican, and due to her disagreements with Stitt, she um, she t switched parties to run against him. And um, Stitt himself might have some more unique vulnerabilities because he's also on the on the outs with a lot of the um, tribal nations in Oklahoma, which are a huge, you know, kind of demographic there as well, who, you know, have also kind of had some conservative voting patterns. So it's kind of an interesting race that you wouldn't necessarily expect to be kind of close, but it could be it could be close. So here's. Um and this is what's interesting. Do, and, and, and do you have that tweet that I sent you uh, or that graph? Right. OK. So we know that the narrative and one of the things that that has been um, the Republicans have been running on is that supposed to this increase in crime that has taken place in the country and crime is up relative to where it was pre pandemic. It is down significantly relative to where it was, let's say, 15, 10, 20 years ago, however m metric you want to use. So really any time over the past 30 years, I think more. Um, again, I subscribe to the notion that the diminishment of, of, of leaded gasoline sort of led to uh, some of this. Um, but here's something that also sort of like really uh, sort of short circuits the narrative. And there's been a couple of studies that have come out some you don't really need studies you can just look at sheer numbers it's not uh, but you don't uh that that make a more general point but here is um joy huff's my uh meister uh responding to uh kevin stitt and and watch this this is an interesting uh, fact let me say this real quick we're talking about lawrence anderson who was redocketed in error by the pardon and parole board this matter That's was right. investigated by the oklahoma county grand jury they allege that there was improper influence. I don't know about that matter. What is your understanding of why Lawrence Anderson got redocketed and then got commuted? You know, th there's thousands and thousands of people and that are that are currently in prison and they're going to be getting out this year uh, that have got certain sentences. And the pardon and parole board goes through those the best they can. There's five people on that board and they recommend for some people to get released. And sometimes bad things happen. And with thousands of people every year. The other thing is just throwing away the key and locking every single person up for good. That's not the solution either, uh, Superintendent. And so things are going to happen. And for you to take that type of shot and bring those wounds back up and try to make those families out there think that that was somehow uh, I was responsible or the five people on the pardon and parole board, uh, they absolutely would change their vote and make a different decision if we knew that that person was going to kill someone. Everybody Everybody out there knows that we all know that you're just trying to make political points that's disgusting pause it now i should yes. say um in terms of the substance i i agree i you know well obviously people who get paroled uh some minuscule percentage of them um could go on to commit a heinous crime um but she learned this from the Republicans. <laughs> and it's kind of fascinating that he said, Stitt says this, because this was kind of similar in the Kentucky governor's race where Andy Bashir, the Democratic governor, now hit Matt Bevin, the Republican, for sentence commutation. So it's kind of interesting that two Democrats in red states are kind of going a little to the right of the Republicans. Yeah. On I mean, I don't, try as a broad message, uh, I don't like it very much. Right. Um, but at least they're talking about crime. I mean, in this specific instance, like I feel like Democrats have largely abandoned that topic and that's where Republicans have made gains nationally. Uh, but this is uh, the, the interesting fact is coming up here. So real quick, let's let's keep the pause down. Thank so you. So let's talk about the facts. The fact is 
the rates of violent crime are higher in Oklahoma under true. your watch than it's in New true. York and California. <laughs> That's a fact. Well, we'll have that oh fact checked by the frontier <laughs> superintendent. It's also a fact that medical Hang on. marijuana... Hang Oklahomans, do you believe we have higher crime than New York or California? That's what she just said. Safety and security... Hmm. Um, hey, Oklahomans, we're going to put up a graph that will show you the per capita. Obviously, um, Oklahoma does not have uh, the population. You will notice that um, age-adjusted death rates homicide mortality by state uh the states that are have the lighter colors are um smaller uh have a smaller uh mortality rate by homicide than in the darker colors and you will notice that uh new york california are sort of like a I don't know what you would call that green. Sort of like a frosty green. Hmm. Sort of like a. It's like a green winter green. green. It, no, it's not quite that dark. A lighter. Green. It's a lighter green. It's like a like a like a frosted green. It's almost like a, a color that you'd associate with like the green of the 1930s. I I associate that color with. Now, of course, if you look at um, uh, can we zoom in on that? Oklahoma. Not quite dark blue like those other southern states. Which also, by the way, correspond with, I think, the highest poverty rates in the country. Might, might. Oh, those don't correspond with the, uh, the states that defunded the police? No. That's odd. Weird. weird. Odd. It's not a lib per capita. <laughs> uh, Oklahoma, uh, significantly darker, let's say, than uh, New York or California. Um, and it is a way to reframe the conversation about crime. It, I mean. Yes. And this is coming on the uh, heels or in the wake of, of a couple of studies. One came from Center for American Progress, conducted by a team of seven academic researchers. researchers. Study compares cities that have elected so-called progressive prosecutors with places whose district attorneys continue to pursue more traditional approaches. Uh, the study found that homicides over re recent years has increased, because it's increased in all these places, less, at a lesser rate in cities with progressive prosecutors than in those with more traditional district attorneys. Also found no meaningful difference between cities with progressive or traditional DAs in the trends for larceny and robbery. Another study by the Third Way a group, these are basically like non-Trump Republicans found that per capita murder rates in 2020 were 40 percent higher in states that voted for Donald Trump than those that voted for Joe Biden. The study found that eight of the 10 states with the highest per capita murder rates in 2020 have voted Republican in every presidential election this century. Just an important uh, data point. Uh, for you to keep in mind when you hear all this uh, BS that's floating around. And, like, why is this happening? Uh, James Sirowiecki pointed out, because um, Washington Post opinion had a Mark Thiessen article, high murder rates driven by lethal violence in Democratic-run cities. And Sirowiecki points out, you would exclude every murder committed in St. Louis and Kansas City, and Missouri would still have higher murder rate than uh, states like New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. And it's because, like, you, like the, thing, the lead thing, like, there's lots of reasons why crime is higher in America, and it is true. Like, there's more crime than there should be in this country. Uh, the solution to that isn't more cops because we have more cops and we um, cage more people than any other countries too. The problem is there's an underinvestment in people. Yeah, <laughs> right. and that is what that that's what's being masked now when you act like it, and that's why it bug, like I I don't think Democrats are speaking well to this at all because that that's where it has to be. It can't be like Val Deming oh. saying I'm the real cop. It has to be like right. this we, was an improvement. I mean, in the yeah, sense yeah. that like at least overthrowing that narrative. Well, the point is just the only time you hear Democrats for the most part talk about the crime is when they're kicking the left to say that the we, I don't support defund the police yeah. as opposed to reframing the argument and saying like well republicans are lying to you about this look at these statistics yeah like in both the tim ryan jd vance to be the first one and then the mark kelly blake masters uh, debate the entire uh, framing from both kelly and ryan was i've 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 supported bills to, to hire more cops. I've supported bills to hire more border patrol officers. There's nothing about like, oh, like what are the actual what are actual things to be done besides hiring people to to 
like enforce the law but that would it, actually I, mitigate any sort of crime. And even if you don't want to go there, that's fine. But just don't either kick the left and say which they're going to uh, the Republicans are going to use their framing about defund against you anyway, because you're the members of the same party. So just for self-preservation, don't do that. Or they're being quiet and not saying anything at all. This third way is better than those first two options, yeah, I think. Because to your point, in the Demings-Rubio debate, I mean, Marco Rubio was talking about Val Demings, a former police chief who was in the running to be Biden's uh, vice president in 2020 <laughs> as one of the most progressive or left-leaning mm. members of Congress. That's just by just by virtue of, of any metric you can imagine is a blatant lie. So why not even... Le- the, the framing of that is not going to change regardless of whether Val Demings shows her badge or not. Right. No. 